Hello everybody! Uh, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can get set up and started with your very first Rain World region mod. I will be doing a video series on how to do plenty of things when it comes to Rain World modding, so stay tuned and if you have any specific thing or questions you want uh, uh, explained, then just, you know, tell me in the comments. Okay. To get started, we are first going to want to find our Rainworld folder. Now, if you don't already know how to do that, you can open up Steam, find Rainworld, um, right click on it, go to Manage, and then Browse Local Files, and it should open up your Rainworld folder. This folder, um, you're going to be using this folder a lot. So make sure you know how to get here. Now, in this folder, you sh there should be Rain World Data. Go into this folder and then go into Streaming Assets. This is your main working environment. I have mine pinned, so I can always access it. But this is where most of your modding will be done. Now, inside of here, there should be a mods folder. If there's not, go ahead and create one. In here, you may or may not have some mods already in here. If you have Downpour, there should be more slug cats and a few others, I think. Um, if you don't have Downpour, this should still work, but it'll be empty. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is create a new folder. And the name of this folder is going to be the name of your mod. So let's just call it your mod name, right? So then in this folder, you are going to want to open up Notepad. Um, and you're going to want to copy this. I have this in the description, so you can just copy and paste. Um, and what you're going to want to do is fill out all of these fields. Now, ID here is the unique identifier of your mod. So usually this will be just the name of your mod, but if you have a mod name that might clash with somebody else's, uh, what you can do is just prefix it with your username. Um, but obviously you don't have to. Now, the name field here is what will show up in the actual mods menu. So it would, so you would change this to whatever the name of your mod is, you know, spaces, capital letters, whatever. Version here is just the version of your mod. Hide version uh, is the true or false for whether or not to show this version. The authors field here is um, just who made the mod. So it can be your username, it can be another username, it could be the mod team, it could be whatever. The description of your mod is what will show up, you know, as the description of your mod. Now requirements and requirements names are two fields for what mods you'll want this mod to require to be played. So if you're doing a region mod, you're most likely going to want to require region kit. Region kit being a very useful mod in making custom regions. Now, if you don't know the ID or the name of your mod, the way that you can find it is to first open Steam and go to the Rainworld Workshop page you can search the title of the mod that you want to be required. You can find it here. Now, up here, there will be a link with a number. The ID equals and then a number, right? If that's not there, you can right click and hit copy page URL. Now, after you've copied that, extract the number and then Go back to your Rainworld folder and go out to common Steam apps. And here you should find the workshop folder. Go in here, go to content, 
and then open the folder 312520. That's Rainworld's ID. Now, you can search in here the number from the URL, the ID, and open this folder. Then open up mod info, and here you will have the ID and the name of the mod that you want to require. So you can put those in the requirements and the requirements names respectively. Check some override version. I don't know what it does, but it's good to leave false, so I've heard. Uh, tags here, I don't think is required, but this would be the tags you would have on, say, the workshop page. I will do another video on how to upload your mod to the workshop later, but for now, you could leave this as cosmetics or regions or, you know, whatever. There's a list, but you don't have to include it. Now you're going to want to save this um, and you're going to find your mods folder. So if you have the folder open, what you can do is click here and just copy um, and paste here. And now you're going to want to name this um, modinfo.json. Now, before you hit enter, you're going to want to make sure the save as type is not text documents txt, but rather all files. And then you hit save. This way it'll save as a json and not as a txt. Now, the second thing you're going to want to do is create a, um, a new folder called world. In this folder, you are going to want to create another folder. Now, when making a region, each reason, each region has a unique two character identifier. For example, industrial complexes uh, ID is HI. Um, chimney canopies ID is CC. Um, you want to make sure that you have a unique identifier for your region as to not conflict with any other region. In the link in the description, there will be what's called a region lease where you can claim acronyms to prevent conflict. So for example, one acronym that I'm using is this character and then an M. Um, obviously, you don't have to make it the same. For this, we are just going to be using XX in place of whatever your acronym will be. Um, and you want to make sure to change your acronym to something that doesn't conflict with anything before you publish it to the workshop. Now, you're going to make another folder called xx-rooms. Now, the capitalization here should not matter. Um, okay, so now inside the xx folder or whatever your uh, acronym would be, you're going to want to create a new text document and you're going to name this world underscore xx. After you make this txt, you're going to want to open it and paste in this, which will be in the description. Now, in this first video, we are going to be ignoring conditional links, creatures, and bat migration blockages. We will all be going over those things in a future video in this series. So first, save this. We will leave it for now. That's just the basic template of your world file. Now, you are going to want to make another TXT and you're gonna call this display name. And this will be the name of your region as it is displayed. So if your region was called say, cinder mill, like my region, you would type that here your region name. You're also going to want to create a new text file called properties. And we can leave this empty for now. I'll have another video going through what this, full, uh, what this file can do. 
you're also going to want to create, yes, there's a lot, a file called map underscore xx or whatever your region acronym is. And we can leave this blank for now. It just needs to exist. We'll create another one called map underscore image underscore xx. We'll leave this blank for now as well. And then you are going to want to save a PNG in this folder called map underscore xx. It can be blank, it can be any PNG, the file just needs to exist. And the reason why these three files need to exist is when we go into making maps for our region, which will be explained in another video, of course, um, the game will attempt to locate wherever these files are. And if it can't find them, it will default to putting them um, in here, uh, which is not where you want them to be. You want them to be in your mod folder. So it's good to go ahead and make them now. Um, so the game just knows that they exist and knows to overwrite these three files. That is all the setup you'll need for the XX folder. We can leave XX-rooms blank for now. Now, to actually add your region to the game, to make sure the game knows that it exists, you're going to want to go back to your mod folder and create another folder called modify. This is where you will modify vanilla text files. Um, there's a whole system for it. I'm not going to go into that in this video. But for now, in this folder, you're going to want to create another folder called world. Inside of this folder, you are going to want to create a text file regions.txt. Now in here, you are going to want to type this add in brackets and then your region just as it's written here this will tell the game to add this to the txt in world regions txt this is how the basic modification works now again i won't be going too deeply into that in this video but that's how you get the game to recognize that your region exists. So this should be all of the setup that you need to create your first mod. So let's hop into Rainworld, shall we? Okay, so once you're in game, you're going to go to the remix menu where all of your mods should be. Then you should scroll down and see your mod name. Oh my God, it's the mod we made. So you can just apply it um, and it'll move up. Now I have a bunch of other mods. Um, now to actually see if your region um, is registered properly, you're gonna want to down, uh, download and install this mod warp menu. You can get it on the workshop. Um, it's very useful for you know, teleporting quickly to new rooms. Right, so once you have your mod in and warp menu, you can apply those mods. And after a while, it should go back. So now you can open up your world save. I'm just here as Monk. And when you hit pause or escape, you should see up here if you installed warp menu correctly. <gasps> It's our region. So if we did everything correctly, we should be able to see our region. Um, if you just installed Warp Menu, it might look something like this. And you can try and find your region. What did we name it? Oh, your region name. It's right there. That's our region. If you want to see all the acronyms, you just press this button. Um, and if that's all done, then your region is officially registered. Um, and that is how you set up your first Rainworld mod. 
In the next video, I'll be going over how to add rooms to your region. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you uh, enjoyed the video and learned something, and you will stay tuned for the next video.